Hey guys, so what I want to try to do today is I want to see if I want to hack it a little bit and use my Ford Maverick as a power generator. Now I know they have that option in, in the Ford F-150 and the Lightning and things like that, but I want to see if my hybrid Maverick uh, can work equally well as a, a power generator. And because it's a hybrid engine, uh, there, there's there's no alternator that charges the battery, the 12 volt battery. So, you know that that gets a DC to DC charging from the hybrid battery, and that gets its charging from the engine. You know whether you're braking or uh, the, the motor's running, that battery is going to be recharged. So, it should work in theory. So I'm going to open this up and see if um, we can hack this thing up. All right, so first of all, I already have the inverter put in here, and uh, the 12 volt battery for the hybrid Maverick is underneath here. And what I have here, let me show you, is a ALFFAA 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. And this is, this is a pure sine wave, and that's very important. I've done tests in the past. The modified sine waves just do not perform like a pure sine wave. So this is, this is a good inverter. And I'm going to use it today, and I'm going to test out if I could power my my uh, corded power tools. So I'm going to leave it right here, and we're going to look at the battery. All right, so I, I forgot to mention, I'll leave a link in the description for this power inverter if you're interested in, in it. Uh, it has USB ports also. Uh, but anyway, so let's move on to the battery. The battery is underneath here, and it sits underneath in the hybrid model. It sits underneath the the passenger rear seat and it does remind me of an old car that everybody had in the 70s you know every household had, a, had at least one of them if you know which car i'm talking about leave it in the comments uh if you need a little bit of a hint um, frat boys and clowns just cannot resist not climbing into one of these cars but they were everywhere back in the 70s my family owned a couple of them but anyways uh battery cover opens up real easy like that Battery sits right here. You got your positive, your negative, and it's a 45 amp hour battery. So I think that should be good enough to power some of my power tools. Uh, we're going to test it out and see. Okay, so I'm going to use some alligator clips to connect uh, the, the inverter to the battery. And one thing that you cannot skimp on, if you do try this at home, do not skimp on your wires. Make sure you're using a very thick gauge wire. This is a six gauge wire. And uh, don't don't use thin wire. <laughs> you will start a fire. Okay. Use the thickest uh, wire you can get away with. So for the for the pins, I'm going to use a hundred amp capable uh, connector. All right. Now that the connector is installed, it's nice and safe. Let's hook it up to the inverter. All right, so this side has the, the voltmeter and things like that, the amps, um, the plugs, and the USB ports. This side has uh, the two fans, which is very important. This has to be very well ventilated. And these ports, so let's put these up and firm your connections. All right, so for, for the body side, what I want to do is I want to put some Velcro to hold it in place. You know, it it actually sits really well in that perch, and I'll show you that in a second. But I'm going to put some Velcro, and I'm going to Velcro it to the perch. All right, so I use uh, this wide Velcro, and uh, it, it just needs to hold this in place. It's not like I'm going to be hanging this thing upside down. So I'm going to Velcro this guy into place. And oddly enough, it'll sit right there and you'll be able to close this chair too. So when you're in storing mode, it'll fit fine. You don't have to move it. I'll show you that in a second. All right, so now it's Velcroed in place and let me show you. It looks like it won't close, but it actually will. See, it's locked in. Pull that, get it out. So you could, you could keep it there indefinitely if you like. You, you just should unplug it <laughs> while you're not using it. All right, so let, let's hook it up. Sometimes it'll spark, so you gotta be careful, you know? See that? When you have the initial touch, it will spark. 
Uh, you can look online for ways to uh, avoid that little spark, but a little bit of spark, it, it's going to be okay. All right, so I'm not going to turn it on yet. I'm going to turn on the engine first, then I'll turn it on. All right, vehicle's on. All right, let's turn this thing on. Looking good. Let's look at the readings. All right, looks good. 14.7 volts and zero draw right now, so that's good. Let's plug something in and right, test it first out. First up is my circular saw. I'm gonna plug this in. I'm looking at uh, the power consumption back here and I, I can't really find, maybe it got rubbed out for how many watts it uses, but uh, it does take five amps. Plug it in and try it out. Alright. Doesn't seem to have any issues. Let's look at the draw while I'm using the tool. See what it says. So 111 volts AC, and I think it was 2.8 was the high current draw. So that's gonna be great. So if you don't know, I do have another channel where I, I convert uh, uh, cars into mini campers, vehicles into mini campers, and uh, I'm gonna actually work on um, a build on that other channel right now. You can look, click it in the description for if you wanna see that build, but I'm gonna be using my power tools, my corded power tools, uh, using this generator the whole time during the, this test video. Um, we're gonna see how that goes. I mean, if I, can I use it all day? Is there gonna be any problems? Will this run dry and the hybrid battery doesn't kick in and recharge it? So we're gonna test and find out. One thing I forgot to mention, do not close this seat. I know it's tempting because it sits away nice and uh, nice and out of the way. It's tempting, but this heat sink is very important that it's well ventilated. So do not close this seat. Keep it open. I'm going to close the door, but I'm going to roll down the windows. Okay, and this stays up. Both windows are open. All right. So before we get started with the power tools, I need to heat up some cold water for my hot tea. This microwave is in my camper van build uh, that I'm tearing apart and rebuilding. But anyways, like I said, that's in a different channel, different video. This one is to test that power generator, the, the Maverick Hybrid as a power generator. All right, we'll see how it turns out in two minutes. All right, it says it's drawing 7.8 amps with that microwave on. All right, two minutes later. Let's see if that's warm. I, it's definitely maybe a little too warm. Maybe a minute and a half would have done the trick, but uh, yep, powers my microwave just fine. issues running the vacuum cleaner either. All right, so my car just kicked on its motor and I that's a good thing, I think. And you know, that says, hey, my 12 volt battery is getting a little bit low, so why don't you charge me up? And if you look at it, it does say 13 now. Bef Oops, let's zoom in here. You look at it, it says 13, and before it was 14 something. So as the battery got lower, the engine turned on, and then I think in time, we should see this back up to 14 something. So that's a good thing. All right, about a minute later, the engine shut off and it still reads 13 volts, which is fine. 13 is good. When it's low 12s, that's when you get in the problem.
And I'm not done, but I'm tired and I'm gonna call it a day. Let's take a look. Still reading 13.0. And I'm gonna leave the car parked right here. I'm not gonna drive it. I'm not gonna turn on the engine or anything. And then we'll just continue tomorrow. So I nothing will change. So it'll be just like we were continuing to work throughout the day. All right, next day, back at it again. Let's turn this on without the engine. So it's 12.3 without the engine on. And let's turn it on and let's see what it goes up to. All right, more than 13.0, 14.7. Let's get back at work again. All right, a big mess later. Let me show you what I did. So in my other channel, my van build channel, I'm building this shower basin right here. Here's a quick peek at the final product. And I, I did all that with cutting from the power tools from the car to my area. And I got almost every cut. I got tired after a while of recording every single cut. So I stopped, I just wanted to finish. But let's take a look. Yeah, 13.0. I think once you start running things, it goes 13.0 and then it, start, it starts off at like 14.7 or so. But anyways, uh, the engine turned on a few times while I was using it, but as a power generator, it worked great. I was able to make all my cuts to build this shower basin. If you want to see um, the full uh, video of this shower basin build, you could click uh, on my Tiny Campers channel and uh, check it out. So this ALFFAA, I'm not even sure what that stands for, but uh, this inverter worked great. Everything was perfect. I was able to make all my cuts no problem. Uh, it's Velcroed in there. Uh, there's a link in the description for this inverter if you're interested. Um, so I'm gonna un unconnect everything and then put everything away. Okay, so in storage mode, remember this is still Velcroed on, so it's, it's really nice and secure. I'm just going to leave, take off the prongs, and I'm going to leave it like that. Put down my seat, and everything's good.